Hi, this is episode four of Rory's Table Tennis Topics, and I've got four new guests as usual. I've got a pro player, Wally Green from USA, and I've got a member of the Board of Table Tennis England, Tony Catt. I've got Dave Godbold, who's a full-time coach up in Sunderland, and I've got Zach Cantor, the number 26 in the England men. So each player, each guest has their own kind of topic we're going to talk about. And we're going to start with Wally. So Wally's going to tell us a little bit about his kind of life in table tennis. And uh, we'll go from there. So Wally, would you like to kind of give us a bit of an introduction and go through your story? Yeah, for sure. I'll do it real quickly. Um, as you guys already know, my name is Wally Green. i uh, born and raised in the projects of Brooklyn, New York. Uh, the quick story is at 13, I was already in a gang. I owned six guns at 13, so I was a real gangster. Uh, I was able to turn my life around through table tennis, right? Um, the fast version of that is someone paid for me to go to Germany to learn. And uh, I spent a lot of time in Germany learning uh, table tennis. And I came back from Germany. And then that's when it all started. That's the fastest version of it. So ping pong saved my life. Cool. And you went on to become a pro player? Yeah. I've played, I've played probably in every major country in the world, including doing my own uh, ping pong diplomacy to North Korea. Do you want to tell so, us a bit about yeah. that? <laughs> huh? Tell us a bit about that then. Uh, so every year I try to do something really cool and really big involving the sport. And then I saw in the ITTF, there was a tournament that was in North Korea and, uh, Dennis Rodman had just came back from North Korea, and, and I was like, I got to go. There's no way I'm not going to go. If Dennis Rodman went, I can go. So I had my association, as reluctant as they were, to sign me up to go to North Korea. I told them that it's my decision, and I want to go. I want to make a difference, and I want to um, just support just uh, support the sport in terms of, like, table tennis for peace or ping pong for peace. And just, you know, try to make a good connection and try to change the world. And that's why I went to North Korea. And you've got... Did you change the world? Say again? Did you change the world? Uh, pretty much. I'm doing a documentary about it now. You know, it takes, it takes one person to change the world. You know, it's one person that's different, one person that does something different. A few people see thought... it and a few people tell other people. And it's that ripple effect. Have you, I, might have my, I don't know if my leader, story. Probably not. Huh? I don't know if I don't know if my story can quite compete with that one, mate. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> they're all booking out now, Rory. Uh, wait, yeah. Wally. So, have you got one of your Dennis Rodman hairstyles at the moment, or or not? No, because because of the stupid COVID nineteen, man. This is the first time you'll ever see my hair black like this. You'll right. never Ooh, ever see Wally. it again. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. Year. So, got the Harry uh, Hill, Rory. I've got the Harry Hill head style. You do, yeah. <laughs> so, so, Wally, and you've you've also with I think Susan Sarandon, you've set up a, 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 a table tennis nightclub in New York. Is that right? Called Spin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's tell so, us a bit about that. Um, so, we have a club called Spin. Uh, you guys probably know the club called Bounce. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 So they copied our idea, like yeah. exact yeah. for exact. Uh, so what it is, it's a, a table tennis, nightclub, lounge, ping pong, restaurant. It's a fun place, but also you can be serious too. Like, like we have, a, um, every one of our clubs has a stadium court, which has bleachers and, and people can watch. And, and um, the reason why we made this was because, um, uh, as you guys know, because you guys play or coach, uh, this sport, it's, it's, it's very serious. And at times it's way too serious for people who don't know anything about this sport. And to get this sport, to, to make this sport uh, better and bigger, you have to get the people who don't know about the sport, the people who don't play this sport, right? And um, so we decided, well, we used to have these parties in our apartment and they were ping pong parties. We'd have friends come over, drink a beer, play tournaments and just, and just have fun with it. And we noticed that everyone liked that aspect of it being fun, you know, having the beers, uh, uh, talking, the socialization, and all that stuff. And uh, we decided, you know what, let's take our thing to another level. We had met Susan Sarandon during one of our parties, 
and uh, we approached her with a business plan, and that's why we opened up Spin. So, you know, Spin is, is a very good place to start of being social for the sport. It's the way you get people who don't know anything about this sport, and is about the sport has to be fun for them. So they come, they have a few beers, they drink, they eat, you know, they party, and then they see two pros playing, and they're like, oh my God, whoa, what is that? Is, that's really ping pong? Wow, that's amazing. And then now you got this person who didn't know anything about it, now they're kind of interested, and then take it from there, and that's why we made this club. When you say we, you, before you mentioned Susan, you said we approached her. Who was that? Was somebody else working with you? Or? Yeah, yeah. So, so I have, uh, well, I had three other partners. One's not with us, right. but two, two other partners. Right. And uh, do you see people going from the spin club to then taking table tennis a bit more seriously in, in a club setting? Oh, yeah, yeah, always. Uh, so, so what happens is, like I said, the first thing for them is walking in and they see this huge ping pong club with all these tables and a bar and a restaurant. And, and, and they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because everyone has played on some level. I, I don't know anyone who said they've never touched a paddle. I, I don't know anyone. But every, everyone has played, right? So then when, let's say I'm, I decide to go in, and which I do often, I might go in just to practice so people can watch. I, I, I might tell my friend, hey, let's hit a few balls on Tuesday at four, it's going to be packed in our club. And, and this is just to give people the real idea of what it is. And then a lot of those people, they see it, and they'll come up to you and say, hey, man, that, that, that's really great. I, I never knew it was like that. Can I take lessons? Mm -hmm. And then through the lessons is how you get them in. And then they start learning. And as you guys already know, um, this is one of the only sports where you can improve something with something so tiny. There is not another sport in this world where if, if I say something so simple, I get a big improvement. That big improvement is the addiction for the sport, right? Because you, you make this little thing, this little tiny thing makes a big improvement. I always say, oh man, I can do it. So people get addicted and, and they love it, man. I have, I have so many clients that who started out just thought ping pong was a sport I played in the basement. And now they take lessons like three, four times a week. That's really good. But we've got this scheme in England, which is quite big, called Ping, which is, I think, Table Tennis England's putting quite a bit of money into it, as far as I know. And uh, uh, like there's thousands and thousands of people playing, but you wonder, do any of them or many of them go on to actually play the sport seriously, or is it kind the, of... The, the, the playing? Ping, Rory, the Ping is all about putting tables around cities. So yeah. there'll be put tables in parks, tables in right. railway stations and yeah. such like and it's actually under a separate kind of funding that we get from sport england for ping yeah. and so so it's just that it's the tables around the place what we also have is ping pong parlors yeah uh, which are yeah. the the shops that get table tennis opened in shopping centers yeah uh, so so we've got That's a couple of things but sorry tony is that through ping as well tony the shops are they through ping through the Ping uh, Project, or is that thing as well? They're, they're, they're a separate funding, but uh, it's nice. the Ping Pong Parlours um, are a separate funding thing, but they're, they're set up in various cities around the country. Did you say, yeah. did you say getting them in shopping centres? Yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, I see, I saw, um, I was going through like a shopping centre in Nottingham last year or two years ago, and I saw like Sam Walker and Josh Bennett and like, I can't remember Beth or something. Is that got any? Is that got anything to do? They were all like playing in the middle of the shopping could be, centre. Could be in the shopping centre. That, yeah, that would be a thing. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that what it is? is? Yeah. 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 Because uh, I didn't know what was going on. I, I just thought. I just thought they'd just come. It's usually you know, in a vacant uh, lot in a in a in, yeah. in a shopping centre where they it's not being used for anything else, and they they put table tennis yeah. in there. So there's one of them in my town, Horsham. They've got three or four tables there, and I did a promotional event there uh, before in February before lockdown to try and get some new members for my table tennis kids uh, session in in my club, and uh, yeah. I got quite a bit of engagement. I think only one of them has actually come along to the club, but you know I think they're a good idea. I mean I think I need to put some adverts for the club maybe up in this in this in the centre, but 
it's yeah. certainly a good idea. I'm yeah. Sure, as yeah. We're, link, we're linked to the one, sorry, Rory, we're linked to the one in Sunderland and it's with the Beacon of Light, which is a yeah. massive yeah. sports centre next door to the stadium of light, the Sunderland football team. So there's a lad called, do you know Chris Blake? Chris Blake goes yeah. in quite often and promotes it really well. And it, come, it comes, all the, all the kids come through the Beacon of Light. So we've had quite a lot of um, sort of kids coming through that scheme. Whereas in the past, I think the ping one, what Tony was on about in parks and stuff, yeah. I think oh, the conversion rate's not very good. I was talking to Rory about yeah. it. I'm going to ask Rory, because he's obviously got quite a decent conversion rate from spin to the table tennis clubs. Yes. Is, is, are your table tennis clubs actually within the spin club or are they separate clubs altogether that you get people to join? Oh, no. All, all, um, all, all our clubs that we have are all connected. It's, it's, it's all the same one club. It's, 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 it's all the same one club. I, I think what, what happens in the beginning with uh, most people who don't play sport, like, for example, me, like, I hated this sport. I tell you right now, when I was in high school, I was in high school as a football player, basketball player. I used to see kids play this sport. I used to make fun of them. Like, I literally abused all kids playing ping pong all the time. I hated this sport, right? <laughs> and why did I hate it? Because I knew nothing about it. I just saw guys with short shorts and a stick. So for me, I was like, this is the worst sport. Yeah. And then when I actually found out, like, oh, my God, whoa, this is, this, this is a real sport. Well, this, this is super hard. But if you learn correctly, you can get good. And, and, and all these little things, then I became addicted. And I think that's what happens for most people who don't know this sport. Most people don't know this sport. The way in is through fun. It has to be fun. It can't be serious. It cannot. If it's serious, their attention span is like three minutes and, and that's it, right? So if you do something fun, what's fun? The bar atmosphere is fun. The music playing in the background is fun. The hot girls walking around serving you is fun, right? That's, that's the fun part. Now you get on the table, right? And you're playing with whoever it is. Maybe these people don't can't play at all. But maybe on that next table, there are two people who can play. <laughs> And then now you see them play, you're like, whoa, man, these, 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 these guys are serious. You know, it's almost nine times out of 10, people will come up to you and they'll say, wow, you're good. Are, are, are you pro? And, and they'll start to ask questions. And then usually if they're interested in getting good or depending on how you present yourself, they'll say, oh, you, you can take lessons? And you're like, yeah, you know, you can take lessons. You can learn little things, you know. And, and a lot of times what, what I'll do is I'll just bring them on the table. You know, like I play people with my cell phone, like for lots of money. You know, I have a mini paddle, and I'll tell them, I, I'll tell them, I say, hey, I'll play you with my cell phone, right? And they're like, oh, why are you gonna play with, 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 with your cell phone? I can be your cell phone. I say, well, if I can be you with my cell phone, then that should show you how difficult this sport is, right? Because you should be able to be with a cell phone, right? So these little things that make it fun for people, that brings them. Into and that brings them. It's and not, then it's not one of them sports that uh, it's yeah. not one of them sports that that has a set that that uh, does well with a serious approach. I agree with that. Right, right. Whereas, like, if you watch if, if you're watching people play like football or soccer, or whatever, uh, you're like. You'll see everyone. Everyone. Can, everyone wants to play serious from the start. Everyone wants to. Yeah, like, exactly. Do you know what I mean? But table tennis, yeah. like, who, who wants to? Who wants to see like two people being serious stood yeah. there, like, because they don't right, understand, right. do they? Yeah. I'd have to say, you're you're the first person that I've ever met who said they didn't like table tennis. Oh, yeah, I hated it. Like, (laughs) like badly. Like, I I, I really, really, really... I feel like a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people like it, but, but like, they won't admit they like it because it's not cool. It's it's not like, it's not a cool sport in in school, in school, a lot of people like... In school, right, right. they They want to play football, they want to play football at lunch, not, not stand there and play table tennis, do they? Exactly. No, it's becoming cool now, though, is it? It's becoming cool, definitely, with the likes of Spain, the likes of what Wally's doing. It's definitely becoming more ping cool. Ping pong championships as well. And the ping, ping pong, pong championships, yeah. Yeah. Definitely more visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. pretty sick. So, uh, that's I've it. got a couple yeah, more true. questions for Wally. Um, I know you set up some outdoor tables in the park. Uh, yeah. In, in, what, is, that in, is that in New York as well? And how did that happen? In New York, so yeah. so so uh, we originally we put uh, two ping pong tables in Bryant Park, and Bryant Park is like in the middle of Times Square area, and uh, 
And those two tables, it formed its own community of people. So now those two ping pong tables are like an attraction where people from all over the world came. And that's also due to our documentary that we made. So, so, so we made this documentary called The Tables, which um, almost got us into the Oscars. And um, the documentary uh, shows how something so simple as two tables can change and transform people's lives. And, 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 and even if you go there right now, it's packed. So like since this quarantine thing, I've been going around with a friend of mine that I always play this particular guy for money because so I, I use my mini paddle to play him, but he's quite good and his style is very hard for me to play. Well, we play for money. So what we've been doing, we've been going around to every park that has a table and playing outside. And people would see it and they'd be like, oh my God, whoa, this is amazing. And then I would tell them about the real sport. You know, this is what goes on, blah, 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 blah. And people, and people get interested, but they get interested through the fun part. And uh, let me just kind of go back to your kind of pro table tennis kind of career. So I believe, did you start fairly late? And yeah, I, I, I started actually playing between 18 and 19 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, but, what, but actually, I'll, like play, uh, playing properly. Really yeah. No, no, like playing, period. Exactly. Like period, like I, I, I period. I, I, I never played. Ping so you didn't, I tell know, you. So you didn't, you didn't pick up, you didn't pick up a bat before then. Like, no, no. Like, I, 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 I grew up in a project in a gang. No one crazy. played ping pong. <laughs> no one, no, no one, oh, no yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, obviously. What yeah, like, like no one. Like? For me, thirty-two. Thirty-two. And how long did it take for you to kind of get roughly to the level that you're at now? And how much training did you do and all that? Um, I. I, I literally went from I went from uh, from beginner to pro in like two years, and not because I was good, but because I had the money to do it. So I got I, I got a sponsor from Rockstar Games, and be, because I made a video game with them, uh, it's the world's first only real table tennis game called Rockstar Presents Table Tennis. I've heard of it. So in the process of that, I told him I says, "Listen, I want to play the pro tour. So can you guys sponsor me?" And they were like, yeah, we'll sponsor you. So I, I got um, 50000 a year for two years just to play. So then, you know, I was at the level where I could play Pro Tour. But, I mean, I was nowhere near. I was nowhere near the level of people actually playing. And um, I used that money to play. And, 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 and that's what I did. I mean, you can kind of see I was living the table tennis player dream. I just went from country to country on Rockstar's money and played every pro tour that I could. And in the beginning, it was, you know, because the concept of, of, of table tennis, it's very different than other sports. You know, in my mind, I was a super athlete. I could play anything. And I went into the pro tour thinking, oh, I can beat these guys. I can beat these guys. And I really couldn't. It was no chance. It wasn't until I started making realistic goals where I would have a chance to even compete. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that came like maybe, maybe in the year, uh, the next year, when I started making normal goals, like saying, all right, you know what? Let's first try to get five points every game. All right, let's first try to take at least one game in a set. All right, let's first try to take two, try to take three. And it wasn't until then, until I started playing better. And then <laughs> you get to the level where you were beating players in these pro tours and so on. Um, it, it was still really, really difficult. And I, I like, I, I came, I came close, you know, I play well, I come close, but it's, it's, it's the, the, the finishing part, you know? And then like, you know, I'm playing players like Chinese national team player. You know, I have no chance to beat this guy. Can I play, play well? I can play well, but can I win it? Nah, not. You didn't know to play him with yourself. play well. Huh? <laughs> You didn't offer to play him with your cell phone, but he used yeah. cell phone. <laughs> no, right? Nice one. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, yeah. I was gonna ask about your your music video. You've got a kind of a rap video. Have you yeah. got a history of rap before that, or was that your first attempt? Or oh no 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 no. I I, I was doing I was doing hip hop since I was like a kid. Right. That was one of the things I I started like really early, and and, and then I stopped for a while, and th and then I thought, you know what? I want to make a hip hop song about table tennis. And, 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 and it's funny because it took me 
it took me almost, I don't know, maybe more than a year to write this because in the, you know what is writing a hip hop song about table tennis is like writing a hip hop song about school, right? It's really <laughs> hard to take it and make it cool for people who are not into it. Yeah. So that was the hardest part of, of how I would write these lyrics and, and, and where they would come from. And then eventually after a year, I figured it out that I would write the lyrics in a way where, yeah, I'm the coolest, I'm the baddest, blah, 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 I can do this. Yeah, you can't test this. But it's about table tennis. I thought it was a really good lyric. I, I really thought the lyrics were good. And, and the, the, it's a good song as well. I mean, I, I, I came across it, I don't know, three or four years ago. How long has it been out? When did you make it? It's been a while. It's been a little while. Yeah, it's maybe five years or something I came across yeah. it. And, and uh, yeah, I like it. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good tune. I mean, did, did it make any money or was it just a bit of a... Well, sort of... well I, never, I never did it to make money. No. I just... A lot of the stuff I do, I just do to promote the sport. I'm, I, you know, when, when, when I was playing, I always said, and even till today, I always said, I've never cared to be the best player in the world. I, I've, I've, never, I've never cared that. I started this sport way too late to be the best player in the world. But I can be the most popular player in the world, or one of the most popular players. And my goal in this sport is, like I said, not to become the best. I don't want to be the best, but... I want to. I want everyone to know that this sport is a cool sport, and cool people play the sport as well. Everyone plays the sport. It's a great sport, and that was what I started doing. It was more focused on it being a cool sport, fun sport, brings people together. Sport, you know, and you have to work your ass off hard. It's not easy. You know, I tell you a funny story. I get I get a lot of tennis players, a lot of tennis pros who come to play U.S. Open, and then they come to my and they come to my club you know, just to, to just have some fun or whatever, right? And so I, I like to bother them because, you know, they, they think that tennis is harder than table tennis, which is not even close, right? So, so I'll go up to them and I'll say, hey, um, you, you think tennis is harder than table tennis, right? And they'll go, of course it is. We got to run so much. The court's so big. And I say, okay, cool. I said, so your court is really, really big, right? And you got to cover so much, right? They go, yeah. I said, okay. I want you to come do a drill with me. It's called multi-ball. I said, the object of this thing is to hit the ball on the table, but you don't even have to hit it on the table, all right? I just want you to hit the ball with your paddle. And I'll feed them a six-point multi-ball drill. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, my God, this is hard. And I'm saying, I said, hey, but what happened? I thought you said, you know, the table's so small, you can cover. So people start to, when they actually get on, they start to see it's that a different this kind. Is it's a different kind of very thing, difficult. Isn't it? Okay, so uh, has any any of the other guests got any comments or questions to Wally before we move on to the second kind of topic? Dave, yeah. Dave? What what are you? Yeah, what what are you ranked in? Uh, what are you ranked in America? Are you have you got a ranking in America? So 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 now I stopped playing um, competitively. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I had. I had a hip surgery um, right. about almost two years ago. So I'm thinking whether to, I play another sport pro as well called paddle tennis. So um, now with this COVID-19, everything's really tricky. And I, I might get back to start playing um, in the winter. I mean, if, if it even happens. So I, I really don't know what's, what, what's going on now for the next, I don't know, yeah. next year. Yeah, cool. Tony or Zach, any, any questions? Okay. One more. Dave, one more. Dave. On. Oh, you got one, Tony. You go, Dave. Go on. Carry on. Yeah. Who's the most famous Hollywood star you've played against? Oh, let me see. How, well, Susan Sarandon is one. Yeah. Um, With, apart from her. <laughs> Jamie Foxx is another. Um, who else? Uh, man. Oh, oh. Um, do, do you know the guy uh, from, um, oh, what's his name? The, the mini-me guy. Oh, oh yeah. Vernon, Vernon, Troyer. Vernon Troyer. Vernon Troyer. Yeah, him. Yeah, Vernon Troyer. Um, Is he any good? <laughs> no, they're, they're not really good. Uh, football City players, soccer football. players. We always get a bunch of people at our club that, that you know, 
like to play, and, and then I'll challenge them with my cell phone to make it fun. Fantastic. Good. So Zach or, or Tony, any questions or comments? No, 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 no. I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty I, I interesting, Zach. though. I met but, Zach before. Right? Yeah, Zach? yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, he's met, like, yeah, we've yeah. met each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? That that's crazy in Israel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. I met him at uh, the Maccabi Games. Yeah, it's such a small world, man. In America. Yeah, I know, I know. I remember okay. that. Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, our second kind of topic is to do with. Uh, uh, Table Tennis England, kind of, uh, is it the director of the board of directors you're on? Um, Tony, if you can tell us yeah. about it. About okay, well, um, I'm on the board of directors at Table Tennis England, and I think it's really important, which is why I'm here tonight, really, to to be a public face, uh, because so often there's an accusation that the TTE board doesn't really know about the membership or it's quite remote from the membership and often people think why are you doing that and so uh, this is much more a thing of of actually being very visible and i've been on the board for a year and it's been a case really that i keep on banging on about actually tte needs to communicate a lot better than it does currently and it needs there's, there's a lot of the the other people on the board are fantastically talented uh, but the the hitherto they've been on for such a short time that we're not really using them as well as we could and uh, i think that we need to be very much more in tune with what the membership actually needs i was really impressed with the uh, um wally there i think he could probably come and meet the board because um certainly you know, somebody as charismatic and, you know, they need somebody to generate more interest in the sport and to make it cool in England because cool becomes a load more people actually playing. And so certainly I have previously been a referee of the World Championship of Ping Pong and umpired uh, the finals a couple of years. And um, that is such a great event um, in that it's really noisy uh, there's loads of people right next to the tables and there's music playing what's what Wally's talking about you know and it's really a great fun thing to watch and it's much better actually to watch the world championship of ping pong because the rallies are so good because nobody's duffing it up because of spin you know, you're getting fantastic rallies all the way through and and it's very much more professionally run. And so um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, the world champions of ping pong is with sandpaper bats, as opposed yes. to Wally uses the word yeah. ping pong to mean table tennis. But uh, in England, if you use the word ping pong nowadays, it tends to mean the sandpaper. <laughs> oh. um, so uh, Tony, I don't know if you've been watching any of the other pod. Uh, you know. Uh -huh. so watched a few of the other podcasts yeah which is why i wanted to come on yeah so one of the things there was a, ju a junior kind of uh show of the ping pong show but called the next generation and they had a few of the best young players in the country and they were all echoing the same thing that they, there was not enough support from table tennis england you know for juniors with training camps some of them are training abroad and they're kind of ignored ethan i think said he won the national championships and didn't get any recognition from table tennis england um also once you go beyond junior a lot of them were saying there's, there's nothing in place to keep them there's no under 21 squad they, I, I don't know how much involvement you have in, in these kind of areas I, well that's dealt with um within the performance range of simon mills and alan cook's part of that team um that i think has been um a problem that's been in place over many years that uh, that um, one of the bugbears for me is that uh, the performance team are very much focusing on uh, Paul and Liam and Sam and yeah. Tom and nobody else so <laughs> and uh, whereas they'll probably shoot me down for saying that because because um, you know I shouldn't probably be saying that 
but on a practical basis a lot of the whole thing they need to have the performance very much a big pyramid going down yeah. and they've chopped and changed and and done all sorts of things that haven't really been very good for building the future because once paul gets you know i think he's just about peaked and you know again so nobody will thank me for that but how long are they going to continue chasing him around whereas they should probably be chasing around zach or they should be you know they should be actually doing a load more for the rest of the performance people because it's probably you you, you can't survive on just two or three performance people you've got to have uh, 20 or 30 really good players because otherwise they're not going to develop to be able to take the next step up to Europe, the next step up to, to Asia, the next step up to the world. And we need lots more people reaching a certain level so that we can actually then have a few of them making that next jump and making... To my mind, they seem to focus a lot on the participation with the loop at work which is for kind of a scheme for getting people playing tables at work. You've got the ping, outdoor table tennises, tables, and um, lots of, you know, and TT Kids is a new scheme, which is really good for under 11s. So they're, they're getting the participation levels up. They're, they're focusing on the, the top men's players, but in between maybe is somewhere they... Well, well, that was the basis of my question to Wally earlier about the conversion from spin yeah. to the table tennis clubs because the ping and the uh, the um, loop at work and even the BETT, that's for clubs. But um, the whole thing is that we need to try to get these fun players into the clubs and, and hopefully the fun players will develop into the performance players. You're right there, Zach. He's having a, he's having a sony. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were just bored with what I was saying. <laughs> but but yeah, so so we need to. I mean, this Johnny is one of the things that we need to really work on trying to filter people through from these other things that are funded in different funds by Sport England and UK Sports. So you got ping, you got ping pong parlors, loop at work, and they're they're all running around doing that. But it's not then translating into increased membership, yeah. which is where we need to try to find some magic formula to try and get. Uh, I think it comes down to local people. Like I think Chris Blake, you said, goes into the ping pong parlours. Uh, you do need the local people, to, the, the local table tennis people to actually go to the ping pong parlours and say there's more to life than this. You, yeah. you, need, you perhaps need to take the next step but it's how to make that next step fun and achievable for them because it's not done in the same mm. place. You know, if, they, if they're playing in the ping pong parlour in Horsham, they're then not going to come to your school in the evening, Rory. Yeah, I, I think uh, they also need to kind of use their top players like Liam Pitchford and Paul Drinkle more. It's like he's number 15 in the world or something and, you know, he's a... He's a class player. I think they need to get them out more advertising. I know they're busy, they're pro players and stuff. They haven't got a lot of time, but if they could try and get them a bit more, you know, kind of... My, I, I, think, I think within this lockdown period, they've done a few videos and things that yes, uh, have. have been published, which I think have, have yeah. been quite well received. Yes. And cer certainly also, um, Liam's trick shots at at various matches yeah. got loads of coverage on I think TikTok uh, because it was immediate you know or it was on YouTube but YouTube, it, was a, yeah. it was an immediate thing and so really you know we, we need to try and work out how we can make the game cool keep the people playing when they get to the end of the juniors through to the seniors and that probably is still make the game cool and and then um you know, we've got to try to keep people playing and encouraging more people to play. There's the perennial thing of keeping women playing, um, which yeah. I think throughout the country, um, you know, if you sort of say it's one of the great mysteries of our time how to actually... I think, Tony, I think it's going to be even harder to keep the women involved as well with um, girls' soccer. 
because everywhere you go, not everywhere I go in the schools, girls soccer now. You know, you come across, a, you see you do a session, you come across a girl and they're normally really good. So, oh, come along, this, you know, come along after school club, whatever. But it's like, oh, I'm captain of the football team. You know, there was a girl I had at John Spence. She's got a scholarship in America now, playing in um, Massachusetts, I think, you know. Really, really top player. Could have been a good table tennis player, but I think football now is going to impact a lot on, on, table t- on girls uh, specifically. Yeah, you know? but football's even bigger in America, isn't it? So oh, well, I, I saw the coach in America for, um, in 1989 for 12 weeks, and it was 95% girls on the courses. Done sort of 10 weeks coaching, two weeks holiday. It was all up Massachusetts, you know, all, all Boston area. And I would say maybe it's 90% girls. And the best footballers, player of the week was always a girl, basically. They just loved it. All the boys played, like Wally said, they played um, American football, basketball, you know, hockey, baseball, whatever. Baseball was massive. But um, I think it's going to be a big, big sort of problem in the future. So uh, one of the things I think seems to be lacking is the fact that the top players don't play with the kind of next players down. I mean, when we were do- doing the... Um, there was one of the... I think it was Pitch and Paul Talking Balls. They were doing a show on, on, on with, the, with Liam and Paul, the top two players in the country, and they couldn't name people below five or six in England. They were like, who would we, oh, put, yeah. in, who would we put in if, if someone yeah. got injured? And they're like twiddling their thumbs, and they, they, they said maybe one of the juniors, but they couldn't even name any of the juniors. I mean, yeah, that's not great, is it? it did you, did like, you see the one with? Sorry, Rod. Did you see the one with Alison Bro on? The girl, I watched the girls' one. That was, was good. I was going to say Alison the same, same thing yeah. came up in that show, didn't it? Yeah, they, she it was, she said she played with all the men. Yeah, you know, yeah. And she, had, she had loads of fun and she played with all the men, and she had a really sort of really good experience and stayed in the game. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, but, I don't know what you think but, there. The funny thing was that a lot of these girls and women. Don't even don't even play each other, and there's there's not that many you know high level females in, in the country. No. They don't even train together. You know, it, it something needs to be done. I think about that. But no, I think what, there is. Go on, Wally. See, see, um, what what you just said is uh so right, and and I mean it's it's right on point. Uh, the main problem with this sport is that um, it's it's so sectional in terms of like if you're a pro player, uh, this pro player has no interest in playing with the hobby player, right? And 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 that's a and that's really I think a very huge problem in this sport. You know, it's just like let's say if you go to a table tennis club for your, for your first time, nobody's gonna play with you. Nobody's gonna say, "Hey, do you want to play?" Right? Because they, they they're gonna assume that you're not good. And they're not going to play with you because that's what happened to me when I first started. Nobody played with me. They was like, I was crazy, right? And that's a huge problem. Very clicky. So, very clicky. Yep. So, so, so it's 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 not like basketball. Like if we go to the basketball court, right? Even I can't play. I call next. I'm next, regardless. That's it. It doesn't matter how good I am. It doesn't matter. I'm next. I get on. I get my ass kicked, and that's it. But table tennis <laughs> is table tennis is not like that. It's very very clicky and. The top players, the, 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 see, the, a lot of the top players, they think that their only job is to be good and their only job is to win medals. Their only job is to win and to make money. But as a top player, you have another job and that's to promote the sport. And a lot of top players forget about the job of promoting the sport because the job of promoting the sport doesn't pay money. But yeah. you, if you want, this sport to get big, you as a top player, you have to promote the sport. You you have to do things that you normally would. I play with everybody. I don't care if, if the guy is bad. I always find a way to do something fun and a way to 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 enjoy what I'm doing with the other person. I always find a way to to do it. And when 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 someone who doesn't know about the sport meets you, they're like, oh my god, that guy was so cool. Oh, that guy was so nice. Right. That sparks an interest. So a lot of the top players, they really need to also focus on promoting the sport for the next group of people that will come in. And that's, for me, that's one of the biggest yeah. problems of so, the sport. So for me, I think that they need bigger squads, bigger training groups. I mean, just having four, I think they've only got four players in the squad at the moment. I mean, 
even the number five player, I don't think he's doing a lot with them. You know, I mean, oh, no. they need to have like 12, 13, 20 players in a squad, you know, especially yep. the younger players coming up. I mean, there's people that want to go pro, but yep. they've never had a chance to, to train with any of the pros in England. That's, yeah. you know, it, it's... I don't know. Something... You know. Do you not think that's down to funding, Rory? Funding, you know, like obviously England can only support so many players. Or in what way? Well, I mean, you know, to have like a squad of twenty people train. Like Paul was on about trying to get a national centre. He keeps like chipping on about a national centre. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not so... saying it has to be like every week. I'm saying it could be. Oh no, no. A few times a year, whatever. It just needs to yeah. have that exposure. It's like yeah. even if it's only once. In, in six months, you know, they've yeah. had that. So you, come, you come together as a squad, see the top 20, you all train for two days. Yeah. Obviously, or, or right the top into the, 20 into the that want to do it, maybe. Not that want to do it, yeah. There might yeah. be some that are re- kind of retired, they're still in the top 20, but they're not really interested. But the top 20 yeah. that are trying to improve themselves, or, or you know, you know what I mean? And men and women, obviously. No, we're not talking just about the men. Yeah, yeah, mix it, mix it up. Worse in the women's game, you know. So, uh, Tony, was there any other issue that you wanted to raise before we move no. on? Yeah, I'm quite happy chatting along with, with what, what okay. other people are saying. So, and, yeah. and did Dave or Wally want to direct any comments or questions towards Tony before we move on? Just think there was, there was one thing I heard that um, Barry Hearn was initially approached by TT like, England to, um, to do sort of the, the, what was it, the ping pong. But obviously, Table Tennis England turned it down. Like, I think he wanted standardised rubbers. He was going to do it as a... Yeah. It's like just standard rubbers. I don't know if that's true or not. But obviously well, the orig- not original, originally, the, when Fred Dove started doing the, the ping pong, it was with hard bats. And uh, yeah. they had hard bat rubber. Um, but it then meant that they, they had to register this money this this rubber and it was going to cost them twenty five thousand to register for a year and he said well we don't really play one tournament why what? Would we but so yeah, so yeah. they to go starting. totally the opposite way with the sandpaper yeah. bats now the, can't the hear any. isn't very keen on the sandpaper and therefore it's sort of leaned on table tennis England uh, to not really support the sand ta- sandpaper rub sandpaper tournaments now. Also, I've I've spoken um, with Sarah Sutcliffe about you know, why when you've, we've got something as fantastic as the WCPP, which has all 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 the um, it has all the noise, all the crowds, and it's fantastic to watch. I said, yeah, well, ha- why can't we do the same thing with the national championship? I can't hear any. She talked with Barry Hearn, and the thing that they were worried about was that, that when he takes on a sport, he tends not to show the sport very much respect of what it is, and he's going to change it to make it suitable for television. Now, in my opinion, I think... Possibly, if we can't get on to television, then we probably do need to change the product. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm going to mention that next when I'm, when I'm on, definitely. definitely. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've had various conversations about these things uh, because <clears> we do need to try to make... The, I, well, I went to national championships this year and I would have to say it was very sterile atmosphere. There was... Well, yeah. there wasn't any. And uh, there was certainly no fun going on. Um, can, can, I, uh, can I just add something to that? Yes. Sorry, what, what you were saying. Can I add some? Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you know how I, I, complete, I completely agree? I wanted to say this before um, about the uh, table tennis, the, te- the, way, the way it's presented uh, and the national championships, an example. I played in it this year and there's just no, there's no, there's no atmosphere to start with, but that's whatever. But there's no, like, there doesn't seem to be any care and, and passion in it whereas like if you watch national championships on youtube from any other country and oh, literally any other yeah. country yeah. You'll, you'll see you'll see you'll see for 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 every age group for every match there's there's so many people invested in the games and and the atmosphere is lightning and there's music and whatever like i i all i was all i'm thinking is is there enough what why, why don't they why don't they just increase you know the sort of intensity of the of the of the event 
Like, why don't they do that? And, yeah. and I know it's I know it's a very good event. Like, don't get me wrong, the tables are, are beautiful. It's such a nice hall to play in. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah. It's, the actual venue itself is, is is brilliant, and like it was great to play in. But but I'm just think I'm just thinking about the atmosphere and stuff. Whereas like, obviously they can't make the national championships. Maybe not like the ping pong. But why can't they aim towards that way? Do you get well, that? Why can't they? Why can't they make it like the ping pong, Zach? Why can't they do that? They, sh they should make it like the ping pong. Definitely. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah, they should. Yeah, why not? Best case scenario. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying best case scenario, make it like the ping pong. But the only reason I said yeah. that they can't make it like that is because they might not have the money that the, the ping pong has. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, but, but why can't why can't they make it a bit more like yeah. why can't they put a bar there? Why can't they put a bar yeah. there? Why can't it be why can't the games be why can't there be a program for like for like everyone who walks in, why can't the games semi finals are this time, this table, everyone yeah. knows, get a crowd for that well. game. Get, yeah, yeah, that's what I reckon. Yeah, that's 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 that show court, isn't it, where they have the show court, then you can mm. walk behind there and mingle around, watch the other, mm. other matches, almost beyond on the court with the, with the people playing. <laughs> You're sort of really close, isn't it? When, when I first yeah. went to the World Championships, you could actually do that at the I World mean, Championships. You could actually. There was one tournament I was at. It was um, 98 European Championships and Walden was playing ball in the first round. And me and my mate were sitting behind the Swedish coach on the bench. You know, and Walden was playing ball and me and Dave Corbett were sitting here. And, and what, anyway, Walden was 20, 14 up in the, in the fifth and lost. And me and Dave, what's going on here? But we're actually sitting on the bench. We're trying to coach Walden from the bench. Uh, yeah. It was unbelievable, <laughs> you know. And we had a few Dude, beers. Good. Good beer. My mate, big Chris, he yeah. got a um, he got a free tray of beer at the end because he drank that much. <laughs> That's what tournaments should be like. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like, anyway. I think I think uh, I think like uh, an example is like another example is like um, like don't get me wrong, like I'm 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 not I'm not a great I'm not a great player myself. I'm not a professional at all or anything like that. But like you six in England's back. Yeah, yeah, but like, it, but but like. But when I was playing this this year at the national championships, like I was playing in like the semi final in the under twenty ones, and and like the only people that were watching that game is like a couple of my mates, a couple of my opponents' mates, and then my coach, his coach, and bloody blah, blah, and whatever. It doesn't bother me. But I guarantee you, a semi final of an under twenty ones national championship in any other country, that that game will have have a much bigger interest whereas like no, no, no one's interested in it in this country it's not, not every, it's like, not like do you know what I mean not, not uh, every country if it was Ireland or Wales or Scotland it probably would maybe not yeah 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 oh no don't get me wrong don't get me wrong like obviously there's there's going to be uh, some countries whatever but I mean like most countries who like who are supposed to like care about table tennis and like be a big big name in table tennis in terms of the country do you know what I mean because England is quite a quite a big I suppose that the biggest sports aren't there in France and Germany and Sweden. You know, it's, it's a bit, it's a bigger sport, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, I, um, I, I, uh, I want, I want to say something about this. Um, the, the, the biggest thing is that, um, first of all, it's the organizer's duty to make those things happen. And it's not, and it's not impossible. It's how much work you want to put in to get the outcome that you like, right? And I'm sure the organizers, they're like, yeah, it's fine the way it is. And that's what most people in this sport do. They always say, oh, it's fine the way it is when it's really not fine at all. It, the organizers need to, to work harder get sponsors. I mean, ever since I've played this sport, I've had a sponsor and I'm an individual. Right, so individuals, it's harder to get money than uh, 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 um, companies or, or, or corporations or whatever. So the organizers, they need to work harder. They need to get sponsors. Listen, for example, let's say the, the semifinals or finals of the under 21 junior in England, right? Let's say I reached out to famous individuals like singers or, or, or someone super famous in singers. You just, you got to reach out to these people and say, hey, listen, we're having this under 21 thing. Could you come and perform? Okay, maybe they're going to say no, but I'm sure they haven't tried. You know, could you yeah. come and perform? And now, the, and now this tournament becomes, let's say, I don't know, uh, Beyonce. Let's say we say, oh, Beyonce's performing at the English National Open. 
Do you know how many people are going to come? Even if they're coming just to see Beyonce, they're not going to leave. They're going to have to watch Table Tennis anyway. So now you have your crowd who came for the entertainment value, who now get to see the actual sport the way it is. So the organizers really need to like say, okay, you know what? We want this to be really good. Let's reach out to someone. Let's reach out to some companies. And the thing is, the reason why they don't do it is because it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. And is it worth, is it worth the money that they won't receive for doing it? If, if, if their goal is to promote the sport, then any amount of work is worth it. But most people don't think like that. So that's why, I mean, in America, it's the same thing too. In America, if there's a big, uh, a big nationals or, 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 or let's say um, uh, um, big tournament, 90, I want to say 99.9% .9 of the people that are watching are players. It, it's players. It, it, it's no one else because our association also doesn't do that because everyone's so damn lazy and nobody wants to do anything. So we have the same problem in that regards. And it's really, really not that difficult. It just takes a lot of work, a lot of pushing, and true dedication that you really, really in your heart want to push this sport and make it bigger. And most of the people who are in, that, in those organizational positions, they don't really think like that. And that's why it's the way it is. Okay, so la my last question for Tony is, is it true that um, in terms of sponsors, uh, you're not Table Tennis England doesn't accept uh, sponsorship from alcohol companies or betting companies, cigarette companies, things like that? And you, I think ITTF is the same. At, at the moment, that is the case. And that's really an ITTF ruling. Yeah, that's uh, ITTF. Because, because uh, for example, for alcohol, some ITTF uh, membership countries ban alcohol. Yeah. So therefore, we can't then get sponsorship from, alco from alcohol companies, and it goes on. So you've got all of these things that would be classified as, as not good sponsors. Having said that, though, football has lots of betting companies sponsoring it. So I think, yeah, really, we, sh we should... Virtually every team. Yeah, yeah. virtually every team. Uh, we, we should actually be doing a lot more with the betting company i don't particularly like the betting companies i think they're, they're they're horrible but but on a practical basis they do have money to advertise um wcpp yeah. is nearly always advertised by uh, sponsored by a betting company That's right, isn't it? Yeah. 